My name is Hugo Burge. I'm CEO of Cheap Flights Media, which is the parent company for Cheap Flights and Mamondo. After university, I, I went on to um, start in a consultancy business. I then moved into the property, property industry. Um, and after that, I just started becoming an entrepreneur in my own right, doing a few things. Um, I started a web design consultancy um, in, in 1999, at the sort of time when everybody was going bananas and leaving their jobs to start web businesses. Um, and at that time, I was really seeking something that would um, f fire me up um, and set my heart alight. Um, and I, I was extremely fortunate to, to come across um, Cheap Flights and the founder of Cheap Flights, John Hatt, um, who, who was travel editor of Harper's and Queen for 10 years. And it stood out from all the other internet businesses that I'd seen. Um, it, it was a very rare, um, rare combination of things. It was in travel, which I was passionate about. Um, it was profitable, which was unheard of. Um, it was a real business, really helping the travel industry and changing the way the travel industry was working. So for me, it was the easiest business decision of my life to want to get involved um, in, in investing in the business. I, I borrowed some money, I put my savings in, I brought some other investors in, I joined forces with David Soskin, um, and we bought the company off John Hatt. Um, and there was really nobody in the business. John Hatt um, was, was quite keen to retire and move on from the business. Um, so really David and I turned up in the business and started running the business. Um, and and there, were, there were three of us back in March 2000. Um, and, and we started the company and have grown it out of cash flow um, and grown out of profits ever since. When describing cheap flights, I think it's worth going back to, to sort of year zero, which was 1996. So cheap flights and John Hatt were really a pioneer in travel search. Um, there was nobody doing this at the time. Um, and so cheap flights has a long heritage of, of, of being on the web and of doing something differently. And really what cheap flights does, it connects consumers with, with travel industry suppliers who sell product. Cheap Flights doesn't sell anything, we're a media business. And one of the first things we did in, 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 in 2000 when I joined the company was to change the business model from being a strictly classified advertising model um, where people would pay monthly fees into a pay-per-click business model. Um, so we were paying um, for, for leads generated to the travel industry. Um, and that's an extremely powerful combination. That, that, that has been the, the driver of travel media businesses growing. Um, it means it's a risk-free proposition for advertisers and, and, is, and is a performance-based model that I think the industry is very comfortable with today. So today, Cheap Flights operates under two different brands. Um, Cheap Flights Media operates under two different brands, I should say. So it's, it's Cheap Flights and Momondo. I'll start with Cheap Flights. Um, Cheap Flights um, was born in the UK, but now we're a very international business operating in eight markets around the world. North America is actually bigger for us than the UK, and we work with hundreds of travel advertisers publishing their best deals, mainly in flights, but we also have six million newsletters where we're able to publish deals on behalf of the travel industry for cruises um, and for package holidays um, across numerous markets. Um, and really, Cheap Flights was born of, um, born of a, a classified advertising heritage. Um, so, so really, it was a reinvention of classified advertising to make it useful for consumers and empower the travel industry to better sell their product in a more effective way. Um, Momondo is quite diff different. Momondo was actually born out, originally out of Skygate, which was a business-to-business -business data company which was providing um, low-cost airline data and, and the broadest range of airfare data to the travel industry in a B2B way. Um, but out of that, the Momondo brand was born in Denmark, um, in Copenhagen. And, and we were fortunate enough to, to buy that business last year. Um, and we're very excited that Momondo's joined the Cheap Flights family. Uh, that business is a, a pure meta search business. It's live price comparison affairs. Um, it's operating in over 15 markets around the world. It's very strong in Northern Europe, uh, and Russia is one of the fastest growing markets. So it's really um, diversified our footprint and enables us to allow travel advertisers and travel partners uh, a, a much broader spread of, of potential consumers that we can, um, help, help, we can help them to find their product. Um, so that's the cheap flight business in, in a nutshell. Today we have over 13 million visits a month to our group of websites across all the countries and, and this year we'll have generated more leads to the travel industry than ever before. Obviously we don't sell product, we try to work out 
just how much product we sell for the industry. And we believe we generate over two, two, million, two billion dollars worth of travel bookings to our travel industry partners. Um, so we're meaningful. We think we can deliver sizable volumes of, of bookings and customers to our travel industry partners. And we work with hundreds of travel industry partners month after month, year after year. In fact, many of our travel industry partners are still the same people that I talk to and chat to today and catch up with, the same partners we had in 2000, which, which I think is quite extraordinary. We launched, our, opened our office in, in the USA in, 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 in 2003. Um, and again, we, we grew out of cash flow into the US market. Um, there was a bit of debate actually in the Chief Flights Board, I remember it um, crystal clear. Um, and there were people who said there's just no way you can launch in the US market without millions of dollars of VC funding or backing. Um, and I'm proud to say that bootstrapping works. I think bootstrapping gives you a mentality whereby anything is possible. Um, and we started small, um, but, that's, that, that has, uh, but, but from small acons, um, you can grow great businesses. And today, the US and North American business, including Canada, is, is, is bigger than our UK business. So it's been a, a very rewarding and exciting adventure to grow in the US. And I think it's pretty rare for UK companies actually to grow in the USA. Um, I think quite a lot of people trip up and fall on their nose. Doesn't mean to say we haven't um, had learnings and, and hasn't all gone smoothly, but, but um, today it's a bigger business than the UK business, which has been great. Um, I think we've seen a shift from long haul flights to short haul flights in the UK. I think we're also quite surprised that actually our traffic is up in the UK, so we're able to deliver volumes to our travel industry partners in the UK. Um, but definitely the value of those leads um, has, has, has been perhaps lower over the last year. And what we've seen is our partners, our travel industry partners in particular, asking for ways to sell um, higher margin products. And we've found that that has been very successful through our newsletter channel. Um, we're also finding increasingly we're able to deliver that through the site with things like, like, like holidays and, and travel deals for packages. Um, so I think for many people it's tough. Um, and uh, I think that what we've also found is that performance-based advertising is, is very attractive under those circumstances. If you're not getting the leads and you're not getting the bookings, you don't pay. So uh, I, th I think that the performance-based model is very robust and helps exactly in these circumstances where some businesses aren't going so well. However, that said, I think that from a global perspective, travel is growing. The shift from offline to online is still happening. There is enormous opportunities within the travel industry for us we will have a, a record number of leads generated for the travel industry this year and a record number, a record amount of traffic. I think there are quite a few trends. One which I've talked about already is the trend for internationalization. I think that what we're seeing is a number of companies um, being successful on, a, on an international basis and either driving consolidation or, 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 or growing across multiple markets. So I think increasingly travel companies need to think about being international and need to, grow in, need to go into other markets. Even if you're focused on a very small vertical or you're a specialist agent, I still think there's a role for you, in fact, perhaps even more business case to go into other markets and multiple markets. And we see people organizing their marketing on a global basis and wanting one touch point. I think people are thinking internationally, the business is growing internationally, people are seeing the in opportunities internationally Nationally. So I think that, that's reflected in, in our business. And yeah, I think it's very exciting for everyone. I think where we're seeing an enormous amount of growth is on mobiles, on tablets, on multiple devices. And I think that um, companies who are, are, are doing well and are growing are embracing this change and are trying to lead and pioneer products that are relevant to consumers on the mobile. But certainly, you know, we're seeing um, very rapid growth in mobile and tablet use. But really, I feel very, very strongly that it's not a huge opportunity. Um, and we're trying to capture, um, capture that by offering a great, great mobile product on cheap flights, for example, where we work only with travel industry partners who are, are smartphone optimized, because we believe that's best for the travel industry partner. We're not handing over traffic that is, is, is not relevant to their platforms, but it's also better for consumers, so it creates a good ecosystem. And I have to say it's been frustrating because I don't think the industry generally is ready for mobile. I think we've been laggards. I think there are a, a few companies who are doing well, and I don't think we've done enough, but we have found that some partners are, are, are doing very well and are hungry for it. We just wish more were ready and would like to encourage others to, to, to get ready for mobile. I think social media is extremely important. It's a, it's a fantastic opportunity for you to engage with consumers and express your brand values. 
um, and, and, and really interact with the consumer in a way that hasn't been possible before. So we really started taking it seriously, I think, last year um, and have grown a lot on Facebook with our engagement from sort of a few thousand to over a hundred thousand um, engaged users. I, I love watching the interaction between people on Twitter and um, we've seen similar growth from sort of I think a couple of thousand to 35,000 engaged users. But it's not the numbers that matter, it, it's, it's, it's those specific engagements and opportunity to exchange views with the brand um, and, and I love reading those. If you'd have asked me five years ago, I think we'd have said we're a media business and, and really we saw our roots as coming from classified advertising and, and we saw technology as a driver. I think today we see technology as absolutely part of our DNA um, and we believe that to be a winner and to be the best company we can be and to offer the best service for consumers and for the travel industry alike, we need to be a technology company and we've been evolving ourselves to do that. Um, and this year we'll invest more in technology than we've ever invested before. We'll have a bigger technology team than we've ever had before. And we've got a, a new and fresh team in that area too. So I really believe in technology and making a better product and a better service for the travel industry, absolutely. And I think it's moving incredibly fast. Um, Another area of change, I think, is, is maybe, maybe an obvious one, is social media. Um, we've seen the rise of user-generated content, which fundamentally changes the way that consumers make decisions about where they go or where they stay or what they do. Um, and that's extremely powerful. You know, this is a more transparent marketplace for consumers. It's a great, great thing. Um, I think that the travel industry recognizes that now. Reviews are absolutely front and center of everybody who's, who's, who's selling or offering hotel product. But I think it's gone going beyond that now with, with, with people's interaction with social media and Facebook. And again, I don't think this is, a, this is not a revolutionary comment. Maybe it's a very obvious comment to make. But I think we're certainly finding that we're interacting with consumers more than we ever have through social media um, and are enjoying that conversation and are enjoying the fact that it's an opportunity to, to share our passion for travel with consumers and exchange ideas on where to go and exchange ideas on what's fun and what's happening. Um, so I think it, it, it's great because I think it makes it very transparent, our feelings for travel and our enjoyment of travel and being able to share that more directly with consumers than we ever have in the past. I think you can get bogged down with numbers because there may be companies, I've seen companies with, with millions of, of, of users who they've bought. Really this isn't about numbers, this isn't about machismo, this isn't about um, who's the biggest. This is about who's interacting on a one-to-one -one basis and really engaging users. I think we have on Facebook now over 100,000 very engaged users and I go on there myself, I read it, you know, it's great fun seeing people's interaction and seeing that passion for travel and seeing people engage on, on photos or ideas or, or small polls and it's great, it's great to see. So I think we're at the, a very early stage in our journey of, of understanding and really holding social media but we are dabbling, we're learning, we've got a great team um, and I, I like to participate myself, you know, it's fun. I think it's worth pointing out that we only really started um, social, our engagement on social media like Facebook um, in a serious way last year and we've gone from you know, a couple of thousand, a handful of thousand um, of consumers interacting to over a hundred thousand and we've seen our, 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 our Twitter account go from sort of one thousand with sort of not much interaction to, 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 to I think over, over thirty-five thousand now. I think there's a number of challenges. I think that there's um, rapid internationalization of the, of, the, of the industry, which is also an opportunity. Um, I think that there's also um, very big platforms who could potentially dominate the industry, the search engines or, or, or large um, mobile phone owners, just for example. Um, <laughs> but I think these things are, are potential threats, but also enormous opportunities. If I was to highlight one challenge and opportunity for the industry, I think it would be this. I think it's a smartphone. I think um, it's the fastest adoption of technology the planet's ever seen. Um, I think anybody who looks at their, their logs and looks at their web analytics will be saying, cripes, this is growing fast, we've got to do something about this. This, this is a very clear investment case. Um, we're looking for partners to work with. We want to generate relevant leads and help consumers find best, better product. At the moment, we're working with a small handful of partners. They are growing. Everybody says their product's nearly ready. Well, come on, get it ready. But sometimes I think that travel is perceived as a political football. I mean, you know, the airports is torture to listen to the debate going on around that. Well, there doesn't seem to be a political will at all to, to, to invest in airports. It's sort of kicked into the long grass. Taxes, you know, it feels like the travel industry is, is an easy target for raising taxes. Um, you know, oh, it's great. We do all the work or you guys do all the work. People selling travel do all the work and collect those taxes and send it through. 
but I think that there's a temptation for people in the industry to stand up and, and get on their hobby horse independently, which I think is good in a way. It kind of raises the profile of the issues. But at the same time, I think the travel industry, and, and I think I put myself in this category actually, can do a better job of acting together to get our message across and um, to make sure we speak with a unified voice, to make sure that um, everybody understands just how important the, tr the travel industry is to the economy. And also just how important travel is. I, I believe passionately that travel is actually fundamentally important to having um, a happy life, to having a fun life, to having adventures, being a better person, um, but, but also good for the economy. And sometimes I feel that travel is sometimes beaten up and given an unfair, um, kind of an unfair um, uh, position. Um, and, and, and I'd like to rectify that. But I do think it's any one person's job. Sometimes I think it becomes about who's got the loudest voice, who can be heard most. But I think as an industry, we need to stand up and work together to try and remedy that because travel is fundamentally important in so many ways. I think as a company, one of our proudest achievements is definitely that we've been flying the British flag as a company and now the UK business is the minority of our business. So we've grown out of cash flow. Um, we've never raised any money. We had £20,000 in the bank when we started in March 2000 and we've grown profitably into eight countries with the Cheap Flights brand around the world um, with a bigger business in North America than the UK. Um, I think that was a fantastic achievement. I'm incredibly proud of the team and everybody I've worked with to make that happen. That was a real adventure um, and, 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 and is quite, quite unusual. Um, and then last year with our purchase of Momondo, which was um, a little hairy, we took out some debt, which was new for us. Um, and it was a very bold move for us, it was a substantial acquisition, but it really increased our international footprint in a way that I don't think would have been possible for us so quickly, um, organically. Um, and so I think if I was to say the one thing we're proud of, I think it's our international footprint. Um, I'm extremely proud and ever so slightly excited that we now have businesses growing in places like Russia, um, in, in places like um, well, in, in Denmark, but in Norway, in Finland, in Australia, in Canada. Um, it, it's a really good feeling. It's very exciting. I love travel. I quite like going to the different offices and, and talking to everybody about our business plan. So from a personal point of view, I find it extremely satisfying. I think as a business, um, it, it's really something to be proud of. And I think that's something actually, frankly, it's um, the British economy needs um, to help get us out of recession. We need people thinking big and growing internationally. So I think we're doing our bit there as well. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's good fun. I think if you're starting out the industry, there are a couple of things you want to think about. You want to think about where are consumers and where is there a consumer need. Fundamentally, that's the most important thing. You need a product that people want and people are going to return to. But also be a bit pragmatic. I think focus on areas where there are, there, there are great margins. Um, so I think you know, when I joined Cheap Flights uh, in, in, 2000, in the year 2000, I was attracted by the margins as well as the fantastic opportunity for consumers and the fact that we were revolutionizing the way consumers searched for travel deals and making it better. Today, I think the same thing counts. If you want to be part of a successful business, find something that has potential for consumers, find something that's growing, and find something that has great margins. If you can find something that has those three combinations, I think you stand a very good chance of success, and there's an intelligent way to analyze your options. Um, but otherwise, if you're working on an individual career basis, I think that um, if, if you're an expert at social media, you're onto a winner. If you're an expert at performance-based marketing, you're onto an absolute winner, very sought after, very hard to find great people in these areas. So if you want to build a career, those are two fantastic areas to do so. Um, and I think it's probably, probably obvious if you're, if, you're, if you're a developer and you're, you're, you're a technologist with a passion for creating great product, I think that's also um, a pretty good career move. Well, it's a great relief that you, um, that, that you haven't asked me just my favorite destination because that, that question, uh, I love it and I hate it because I love travel so much that I couldn't possibly give one destination. Um, but let me, let me give a, a, an anecdote, I guess. I'm horrified to say that, that this year I turned 40, so my way of dealing with that was to have some travel treats. So I've had some magnificent, very fortunate, I've had some amazing experiences this year. So I went, um, I went uh, ski touring in Norway. Um, this year, which was fantastic. I recommend it to anybody in the Lingen Alps flying to Tromso. Um, and it was quite magical and absolutely stunning. For me, um, took me miles away from everything and, and into felt like a proper adventure um, with, with some great friends who I connected with and shared some amazing experiences. It was also pretty good exercise. Um, that was good. Um, also, <laughs> um, 
went to Italy um, in the summer, which was, in, in the summer, which was fantastic, um, and also went sailing around the Inner Hebrides. So I'm not just an evangelist for travel um, all around the world. Uh, there are some amazing experiences you can have in, in the UK as well. Um, but in terms of my favourite travels ever, um, I think it's the ones that are most meaningful f to you that, that I think are the most important travel experiences. And I think one probably stands out. I mean, there are so many. I can't help saying I loved Madagascar for the lemurs. Um, but they're fun and they're funny. And, you know, that, that will remain with me for the rest of my life. We had a fantastic time. But probably more meaningful was seeing mountain gorillas in, 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 in Zaire, now Congo, in Kahuzi Biega National Park. And that was a humbling experience. That was a reminder that we don't own this planet. When you're three feet from a silverback gorilla who could squish you with one, you know, with one hand, um, it's humbling to remember that we weren't the first here, and it's not our planet. Um, so I think I get an enormous amount out of travel personally. I've had probably the best experiences of my life in travel, apart from business, actually. That's also pretty exciting. But, um, but travel is amazing, and we love sharing travel. Um, and so, I, I don't know, I, I find it hard not to carry on talking about this for a long time. There are many more places I'd like to talk about and many more places I'd like to see personally as well.